Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of the This Is Gonna Hurt podcast with Jay Gordon Duncan. And if you're wondering why the Jay, the answer is I'm not a bagpipe player. And if that joke doesn't make any sense, I encourage you to check out episode zero where I explain that joke as well as the purpose of the This Is Gonna Hurt podcast, where we talk about faith, family, fitness, finances, and sometimes fun. But of course, we start every episode by saying thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Last week, uh, the uh, interesting topic of are you te- teaching pigs geometry or are you teaching geometry to pigs? And it's a uh, quote that comes from a book called One to Many. And it's a question about whether your business is stuck just educating and not converting or not actually transforming. And I appreciate the feedback. I, it was definitely a bit of a click baitish title. I try not to do that. Uh, but I had some great conversations, particularly one just yesterday where I just sat down with some folks here in the area and we discussed that. Uh, they followed the seminar model of growing their business and we went deep dive on that. So I really enjoyed it. But thank you as always for the likes, the comments and everything that comes along with it. But today, if you've seen the title of the episode, My Top Five Bands of All Time, here is why. Presently, if you're following me on social media, we're doing a rock in roll April. Now, enroll is E-N-R-O-L-L, rock enroll. We're enrolling people into the Capitalize Your Best program. Uh, my goal is to impact 11 business owners in the month of April, and we're well on the way towards that number. But what I'm doing every single day is recreating album covers or reimagining the Capitalized logo um, in some sort of rock and roll tribute way. Now, guys, I'm not a skilled graphic artist. We have skilled graphic artists on uh, the, you know, for the company, but this has just been a fun project I'm doing. So some of them look great, like the Pink Floyd cover. Really proud of that one. Uh, the Grateful Dead one coming up. Eh, it's kind of okay, um, but I'm enjoying doing it. And every single day, um, I try to create a post. Um, sort of uh, imagining it with some of the lyrics and tributes to the band that I'm talking about. And then I offer a special. Um, So for example, today, as I'm recording this is Saturday morning and I did ACDC's Back in Black, which you might think might be an easy one to reproduce, but actually wasn't. It's pretty nuanced. And um, I'm offering a 48% savings on the six month program, Capitalize Your Best. Pretty crazy Um, But then I had fun just kind of writing that post um, along the line. Just there's a lot of I mean, that's one of the top 10 best selling albums of all time. So those songs are very much part of the culture. But today, so I thought, well, since we're doing this rock and roll theme, let's do one of our fun episodes. I haven't done a fun episode in a while. And I thought, well, I'm just going to share my top five bands of all time and share with you why I like them. And so if you care about lists and that kind of thing or you want to know more about my musical taste, um, then this episode is for you. Um, but, and I thought, man, I need to get some people on here and do their top five. Uh, it would be a lot of fun to do that. So, uh, I, I'm doing my best to get back to having guests, but honestly, guys, I just enjoy my Saturday mornings talking to you guys here on the computer. And, uh, it, it that's kind of become a, a new pattern for me now that we're not in the studio anymore. And I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, so I'm having my coffee. I'm gonna do my best for my slurps, not to be terrible. I re-listened to last week's episode and I was like, wow, that was loud. And so, uh, but if any of you uh, know me, you know that my musical tastes lend towards heavy metal and hard rock and folks are like, I can't see that. But, um, you know, my parents, uh, when I was six years old, gave me two albums. They gave me a Spider-Man album where you could listen to it and read along. It was a lot of fun. And they gave me Kiss Destroyer. Um, Because they thought that also was a comic book. And that was it, gang. That was it. Uh, uh, Detroit Rock City, Shout It Out Loud, King of the Nighttime World, Flaming Youth, Great Expectations. I mean, all that stuff just became woven into me at that point in time. So in the 80s, um, when my uh, passion for playing music kicked off, I started out as a drummer. And really wanted to be a drummer in a metal band. When people say, what did you want to do when you were young? I always go, I wanted to be the drummer of Motley Crue. That didn't work out. Um, They actually, believe it or not, I don't know if you know this, Motley Crue's actually had three drummers. Um, uh, One drummer, Randy Castillo, who passed away. And then Samantha Maloney from Hole was their drummer for a brief period of time. And then, of course, Tommy Lee. Um, And then that morphed into me playing guitar because I went to college. I couldn't take my drum kit. And I've been a guitarist ever since then. Every now and then I get to play drums. Um, But music is very much a passion of mine. And then the 80s, 
guys, it was hard rock and heavy metal and glam metal and, and thrash and all that. So it was just an amazing time. Rolled into college and it was the 90s. And though I didn't, uh, though I won't ever say that grunge was my music and music was very much alive. And uh, so that's just, I mean, I, I can't ever help it since then. Now, eventually I broadened out and enjoyed jazz and Harry Connick Jr. and Miles Davis and, and, and broadened out. But I've got to admit that in the last few years, I've really kind of gone back to my roots, uh, hard rock and heavy metal. And you're going to find in this list, you're not going to find bands like the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. And I have absolute respect and love for those bands. I really do. Uh, I, had a, I had a massive Beatles phase at one point in time, just playing guitar. Very much love them. Um, in Led Zeppelin and some of those classic, classic rock bands. But my top five bands I'm going to share with you. Now, uh, many of you could probably guess what number one is. We're going to get to that. But I'm going to be honest with you. Five, four, three, and two rotate all the time. It really comes down to my taste. And when I look at this list, every one of these bands uh, started in the 70s or 80s. And Amy will tell me sometimes, you got to get some new music. And there is new music I like, but you just can't get away from what you grow up with, at least I can't. And when I'm working, when I'm uh, uh, producing graphics or I'm writing copyright or I'm uh, designing a seminar, music is a constant for me. I only listen to podcasts when I'm running or traveling, but if I'm creating, I don't typically listen to podcasts because I can't concentrate, but music does it for me. Um, and so Usually when I look at my Spotify top five, five of the, the four or five of these bands are always there. I know of a couple others that might slip in, but these are my top favorite. So I'm going to share with you uh, the list. I'm going to show you how I got uh, connected to them and share some concert experiences because I've been fortunate to see all top of five of my bands. So I'm going to start with number five and number five is Ingve Malmsteen. Ingve is spelled Y N G W I E. He is a Swedish guitar player. He was really at the forefront of starting the neoclassical movement. He is a shredder. He is an absolute genius on guitar. Just, um, I mean, just amazing. Now, I found Ingve uh, when his solo album, um, you know, when, when Marching Out and Rising Force came out and just blown away. And he had that brief period of time where he actually had a top 40 hit. Um, with having tonight and some stuff like that uh kind of lean into that hair metal movement but he was always a shredder just uh, by shredder i just mean just amazing number of notes Nia classical at his heart he loves classical music he loves bands like deep purple and rainbow um but just phenomenal and he used to have a band concept and he would bring in all those old uh, British lead singers like uh, Joe Lynn Turner and he'd bring in um, Goran Edmund and guys like that and then he helped of course launch the career of um, oh my goodness uh, uh, Jessica Soto and just uh, and so I have been fortunate I've seen him uh, I think four times I'm uh, pretty sure that's the number um, I've seen him in some really random places uh, I'm going to admit when I saw him at the Lincoln Theater in Raleigh, I am, I am with all seriousness, I attribute that concert to some of my hearing loss. I definitely have hearing loss. And I think that concert was one of the loudest concerts I've ever been to in my entire life. And I was very fortunate that about a year and a half ago, Emma and I went to go see Ingve and uh, a band called Images of Eden opened up for them. And I was actually able to have the lead singer of Images of Eden on the show here. His name is Gordon Tisworth. And so another great Gordon. Um, but we had front row. And I mean, front, there was no one in front of us. It was not a, a huge crowd that day. But I got to witness, like, you know, uh, uh, Malmsteen right there, just as close as you could. And, 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 and he doesn't really have a band concept anymore. He doesn't have a, a lead singer. He takes the lead singers and his keyboardist does the lead singer. So now the band is sort of off to the side and he's in the, in the middle. And that's where he's at right now. Um, I think I enjoyed the band concept a little bit more. But guys, just uh, if Malmsteen puts on an album, I'm going to listen to it. Uh, just phenomenal. He did a uh, a concerto, a classical piece that was just amazing. And you can get the studio and the live version of that right now. Um, but guys, if you've never listened to Ingve Malmsteen, definitely listen to him. Um, if you want something that's a little bit more along the lines of pop sensibilities and not instrumental music, um, definitely check out, check out his album uh, Trilogy. Um, I think that's where he started leaning into that. Uh, and then also look for the song Heaven Tonight. Uh, that was probably his biggest like 80s, like metal pop kind of, um, you know, I mean, he had a 
um, you know, he had a, a pop sensibility in that point in time, but still with all the heaviness and the neoclassical. Um, and so just check that out. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've been fortunate to see him. And then the last time I saw him, which was probably not the best concert of his that I've seen, um, but it was front row seats. And so just absolutely loved it. So Ingve, um, you know, uh, and I'm going to mention Amy a lot here. Uh, Amy enjoys some of the uh, soloist of the instrumental stuff he does and some of the, the ballads that he's created. Um, Cause he doesn't really have any screeching vocalists. Um, you know, when I look at this list, uh, three of the bands on here, Amy cannot stand the lead singer. Of, so it's kind of funny when it comes on, I play it and just kind of annoy her, but Ingve definitely number five, proud to have shared that moment with Emma and go get to see her. Uh, number four could easily be four, three, or two, depending upon my taste for the day. But number four is the 80s Christian rocker Striper. I love Striper to this day. They keep putting out good music. It's interesting. They're one of those, uh, I know that Michael Sweet, the lead singer, doesn't like to call themselves a glam metal band, but they were. When you look at their image, you cannot argue with the hair and the makeup. Um, but they were also the very first, like very upfront, we are a Christian metal band. They would say we're a metal band who happened to be Christians, but they were very forefront of their faith. And there was a period of time in the 80s where I would only listen to Christian music and Striper was sort of my my refuge because they were good. There was a lot of bad Christian music out there at that time. But now they've morphed into a heavy rock band, you know, with a little bit of Judas Priestville and continue to put out good music. I know that right now um, online, they have, uh, they've got uh, an acoustic tour coming out, but I've just finished a new album. And you know what? Um, I have emailed the lead singer, Michael Sweet, through my buddy Pete Evick. And we've emailed a couple of times, but I've never been able to have him on the show. And so I'm going to really kick up those efforts. I've spoken to his friends, Pete Evick and Ron Keel. Those guys have been on the show. They all speak super well of him. But uh, I'm hoping to have Michael Sweet on the show as we uh, get closer to the album release. Um, guys, Robert Sweet, the drummer, um, they call him the visual timekeeper. He plays sideways. So you can see what he's doing. Phenomenal drummer, heavy handed, super talented, but also super visual and entertaining. Uh, he was definitely in that Tommy Lee style of drumming. And guys, uh, the album Soldiers on Command is heavy as dirt and was really good. Then they morphed into an album called To Hell with the Devil. That is the lyrics and the vocal style that my wife hates the most in the world. She can't stand that song, um, but it helped me learn how to play drums. Um, so I was able to see them in 86 and 87 or 87, 88. I can't remember. Uh, I was able to meet the first time uh, we saw them. We were able to meet Robert Sweet, the drummer, who was my drum hero. The second time we got backstage passes and we were able to meet the whole band. Um, I then later saw them when they reformed in the 2000s in Raleigh and was able to meet Robert Sweet again. So I think I've seen them three times and each time I've had an opportunity to meet at least one of the band members, if not all four of the band members. And guys, uh, they're a go to. Um, I will. I will grab a, a Striper album or I'll just grab a Striper playlist and play them quite often in the background. And they still get good rotation on shows like uh, Hair Nation uh, on XM Radio. Uh, if you have that, uh, they, they are definitely respected from a musical ability. A lot of people don't like their their lyrical choices. But guys, phenomenal. Michael Sweet, the lead singer, has put out like 10 solo albums or something. Most of those are really, really good. That first one, Truth, is phenomenal. They've had some splinter bands, uh, Sin Dizzy, Icon, and a couple others. Michael Sweet's done projects with George Lynch of, of uh, Dokken. Um, and just, I mean, a bunch. He did a, a really interesting side project with Tracy Guns of LA Guns. It was sort of like a Black Sabbath kind of thing. Um, and just, I mean, he, they, he is a writer, producer. He just puts out music and he produces. Uh, so Striper, again, could be number four. They could be number three. They could be number two. I absolutely love those guys. Don't love everything they've done. I mean, who loves everything a band has done? But guys, I love most of everything they have done. Uh, and again, their last three albums have been super heavy and super good. I think what's being said about this new album, it's got a little bit more of the old school striper melody to it. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing that because uh, the, their, their melodies are phenomenal. They're sort of sticks in Boston, Mary Judas Priest. Um, and then at one period of time, they're added a dash of glam. How is that? Um, 
you know, and they put out a, a cover album called The Covering, which is really good. They covered everything from Striper to Scorpions. I mean, excuse me, Kiss to Scorpions. So I can go on and on. Um, they are they are an underappreciated band because a lot of times people don't listen to them because of their faith. Um, but then again, you know, listen, not everybody listens to Slayer as a Satanist. So I, I mean, it's kind of unfair that they didn't get a break. Uh, but Striper is definitely number four. I believe I have seen them three or four times it's funny uh, these days i can't remember how many so that leads me to number three now this band amy cannot stand the vocalist for i absolutely love the vocalist for and in 2019 i finally saw them i had never seen them and that band is iron maiden i love iron maiden now uh, i was able to see that concert with landry and it was a last minute choice. We were in Charlotte, North Carolina for a couple of days. And I discovered they were in town and the lawn seats were cheap. They were like 20 or 30 bucks. And so Landry and I went and you know what? We were able actually to move up and get some better seats, uh, which is definitely a, a concert veteran trick. And it was when they were doing all these deep cuts. The show was amazing. Uh, flying angels and airplanes in the air. And just, I mean, the, 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 the visuals of the show were amazing. They sounded amazing. But guys, I've got to say that their live album, uh, Live After Death, I have listened to a million times. That was right after they did an album called Power Slave, which was Egyptian themed. Iron Maiden is very... Uh, uh, they do lots of themed albums, kind of gothic. They'll, I mean, they'll sing about... Uh, books they've read or things going on in Egypt. I mean, they're 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 a heady band. Bruce Dickinson, their their lead singer, is that way. Um, and, and guys, I could just go to their music. But you know what? Typically, if I want to listen to them, I'm either going to pull up like a greatest hit spot list or spot um, playlist, or I grab one of their two out. They've got a ton of live albums. Live after death, um, uh, I go to a, a lot. And another one they have called Flight Six Six Six. Um, which is a phenomenal live album, um, 666, because they have an album called Number of the Beast, which people kind of freaked out over. They're not Satanist, but in the 80s, everybody wrote a song about Satan, even Striper. Theirs was just to hell with the devil on the opposite side of things. But, um, you know, they have put out some, some middling albums, um, but they're kind of in a groove. Their last album uh, was a, a Final Frontier, or no, it was Sin, um, I, it, Sinetro, forgive me, I can't pronounce they're a little bit slower than they used to be. Um, uh, that's probably due to just sound writing, uh, songwriting. Their drummer, Nico McBrain, interestingly uh, enough, is a is a professed Christian um, and just but a phenomenal drummer. Just this massive drum kit. So big, he says he can't even see the crowd. Um, but their main songwriter is Steve Harris, who's an amazing bass player, um, who just has a style unlike most any other. Um, but... Um, I'm rarely going to go to Iron Maiden if I'm like, yeah, I mean, really, uh, Iron Maiden is music kind of runs in the background for me. Um, my favorite song of theirs is called Hallowed Be Thy Name. They end a lot of concerts that way. And I think their rendition, rendition of Flight 666 is amazing. So typically what they do now is they put out an album, tour, put out a live album, and then they just repeat. And so uh, they're not retired. Uh, their lead singer, Bruce Dickinson, the human air raid siren, just put out a solo album, which is not bad. I like some of his solo stuff. And Steve Harris has got a little side band called British Lion. Um, Adrian Smith doing music with Richie Cotson. So we got stuff all over the place, but there's nothing like an Iron Maiden album. And what they do is they never tell you they're working on an Iron Maiden album. They'll just go, oh, the new Iron Maiden's coming out. And then we all can't wait for the covers because their cover has their zombie-like creature named Eddie. And guys, just as an 80s heavy metal comic book sci-fi nerd, me could not beat Iron Maiden. I mean, uh, um, I, again, I've listened to Live After Death hundreds of times, maybe more than any other live album that I, I've ever listened to. But right now, I typically go to Flight 666, which is a very similar album. Uh, it's got a couple extra tunes there. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, they were on Guitar Hero with Brenda the Hills and Wasted Years, and they kind of branched over. So my kids don't love Iron Maiden, but they definitely know Brenda the Hills and Wasted Years. But I was able to see them finally with um, Landry. So that leads me to number two. And uh, again, this band could be two, three, or four at any point in time. But my second favorite band, guys, is Megadeth. 
wow, I love Megadeth. Heavy, heavy band, thrash band, one of the one of the uh, the big four, as they call them, that helped start the thrash metal movement. Dave Mustaine, their lead singer, principal songwriter, soloist, was uh, a founding member of Metallica and was kicked out for doing too many drugs. We're near a band called Metallica, which is a combination of uh, like metal, vodka, and alcoholica. And you get kicked out, you're doing a lot of drugs. And so he immediately started a band called Megadeth. Um, and that band uh, was sort of a punky thrash band. Um, and they put out a, biz, uh, a song, an album called Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good. And people are like, what is this? But then they put out um, Peace Sells, But Who's Buying and took off. Um, uh, David Ellison, the bass player, who I interviewed for my blog, that when that was a thing way back in the day, um, you know, played this amazing bass line that Dave Mustaine wrote that was the backdrop of, um, you know, MTV News when that was huge. And then they had an album called Countdown Extinction. I think that was their fourth album. And they actually were a, a top 40 band and they were big and they, they had their they had their big moment. Um, and guys, they've had a ton of lineup changes just constantly. The only constant is Dave Mustaine. And they put out an album, uh, Dystopia, six, seven years ago, and finally won a Grammy. And that album is heavy as dirt. Like, unlike Metallica, Megadeth has continued to be heavy. They had their moments, but they're heavy now. And then they put out an album called The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead about a year and a half ago. Phenomenal album. I have played that album over and over and over again. Uh, and they release small things like these weird little acoustic albums and some odd little live albums here and there. But guys, uh, I, I know, I've got a playlist on Spotify with every single song they've ever recorded. I didn't create it. Someone did. And that goes on repeat a lot. Um, absolutely love Megadeth. Interestingly enough, um, uh, both Dave Mustaine and the former bass player David Elfson have claimed to be Christians. And David uh, and, and Dave Mustaine is still very up, up front about that. Uh, David Elfson got into a little bit of trouble with a fan a few years ago, kind of tarnished his image. Um, and he's no longer a member of ba the band because of that, but he has a bunch of side projects, metal allegiance, altitudes and attitudes, um, uh, uh, fate. I can't, uh, like it's spelled really weirdly. And he just plays all over. Um, the, I mean, he gigs with everybody. And so, um, just a very, very, uh, active guys. Written, they've all written books. And one of my favorite guitarists in the world, Marty Friedman, if I ever do a top five, he would be in that list. Um, was the one of, was their main soloist for a good chunk, like five albums, and just during their their heyday, if you want that. Guys, I just don't get tired of Megadeth. I really don't. Um, Dave Mustaine again, kind of a whiny voice, like hello friends. You know, he kind of uh, not a vocalist by training, but um, definitely part of the Megadeth style. Phenomenal. I mean, they their solos. I mean, and they've gotten heavier. And I and and I think as I get older, I like heavier and heavier music. But Megadeth right now, solid number two. They could rotate anywhere. So that top five was Ingve, Malmsteen, Striper, Iron Maiden, and Megadeth. And so my number one band, which always sits number one, and I think most of you know this, but my number one band is Kiss. I love Kiss unapologetically. They're not a guilty pleasure. I just enjoy listening to them. And if you get past all the makeup and the extravagances, they're phenomenal musicians. Uh, widespread just respect for them. Every band on here has respect for him. Interestingly enough, Ingve tried to audition for Kiss in 83. Uh, Striper has mentioned their legacy and has covered them on the covering. Uh, Iron Maiden opened up for Kiss and Megadeth, um, just huge fans of Kiss. They were going to do a cover album, a uh, cover song for them. David Ellison recently was on the Shout It Out Loud cast talking about how much he loved uh, Kiss. The, the guys, their impact is amazing. 100 million records sold. And even now when they have finally truly retired, I think um, they just sold their image for $300 million. They will continue on. But yes, I got exposed. My parents exposed me to them at a young age. And I just, again, I'm a heavy metal uh, the horror movie comic book nerd and, and kiss is the air with all the makeup and everything. And so loved all that. I followed them when they took the makeup off in the eighties and the early nineties. And then when they reunion, now here's the amazing thing. I have seen kiss six or seven times. I never got to see the original lineup. I never got to see the, 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 you know, the original four, they reunited in 96 and I didn't get to go. And I, I really regret that. Um, but I've seen them six or seven times in various incarnations. I've seen each original member. 
um, I've seen three fourths of them perform together. And uh, recently, uh, a year or so ago, I got to go see Ace Freely, my guitar hero, um, in concert. And my buddy uh, Pete hooked me up with backstage passes. And I was able to meet him personally and get his signature, just, which was very, very cool um, to, to meet, you know, meet one of your guitar heroes. Um, and so just, yeah, guys kiss. Uh, I, I have, a, I have several playlists for them. I listen to, I have a, every song they've ever played, which is like 200 and some songs. Um, I've got a Gene Simmons playlist. I listen to a lot. Um, I got the best of the solo albums. I mean, uh, they, they just continue to be the band I listen to the most. And even if I take a break from them, which I will do, uh, Spotify keeps just feeding them to me when they create my playlist for the day. Um, but it's funny, a couple of things that people may not know when I was leading music in the churches that I planted, sometimes I would rearrange the choruses to fit, um, uh, the uh, patterns that you'd find in kiss songs so for example in rock and roll all night there's a part where they stop and like i want to rock and roll all night music stops and the crowd goes party every day and it comes back and there was a song we used to do called shout to the north that i rearranged the chorus in that same way where the nations will uh sing and then everyone else would join in so i, I often would kind of rearrange the co uh, worship choruses to the style of kiss songs don't tell anybody and that was a lot of fun every time i played it i just kind of gave it a wink um but guys those are my five uh favorite bands Ingve, striper iron maiden megadeth kiss i did not mention great bands like the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Guns N' Roses, Guilty Pleasures like Poison, uh, heavier new bands like Slipknot. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I'm listening to music constantly, but these five can't seem to get out of my rotation. They just come up every single year. And since this is Rock and Roll April, I wanted to share with you purely this indulgent episode where I shared who my five favorite bands are. I might do some more fun episodes, five favorite guitars, five favorite drummers. Need to bring on some guests. Uh, for that, just to get you some other, impo other inputs other than mine. But since this episode is a fun episode, a little different than uh, the faith, family, and fitness and finances we normally talk about, appreciate hanging in there. And if you're interested in Rock and Roll April, definitely check out my Facebook page where I'm sharing those specials every single day. Or you can just go to CapitalizeYourBest.com, CapitalizeYourBest.com. It's these words right here with .com and set up an appointment with me. And I'll be glad to tell you about it. So, guys, thanks for listening. Appreciate you indulging me on this fun episode. And I can't wait to talk to you again next week. Thanks, gang. Bye-bye.